A long shot takes his first victory. Settle in as we rewind the week with the latest edition of Monday Backspin from PGATour.com. If you would have asked Eric Ernst on Tuesday if the Wells Fargo Championship seemed like the right place for his first victory, he probably would have laughed. Not because the rookie isn't talented, but because he was the fourth alternate at the beginning of the week. Thanks to a considerable amount of WDs, Ernst, who has made just two of seven cuts this season, went to work, going from alternate to winner in just four days. All week, eyes were on Phil Mickelson, who has a great track record at Quail Hollow and seemed ready to finally punch his first win at one of his favorite courses on tour. Quietly, though, Englishman David Lynn and UNLV alum Derek Ernst were grinding away, both carding two under 70s on Sunday to get to eight under overall, putting the pressure on Mickelson, who had a one-stroke lead with just three holes to play. With back-to-back -back bogeys on 16 and 17, Mickelson went from staring down his second victory of the season to scrambling just to make a birdie on the 72nd hole to join the playoff that was now setting up between Lynn and Ernst. He would not be able to convert, leaving two winless players to battle it out on a rainy, windy day in Charlotte. Ernst played the 18th perfectly, which was the first hole of the playoff two putting for his first victory on the PGA Tour, which changes his entire season. With this victory, the UNLV alum improves from 196th in FedEx Cup standings to 32nd and goes from an abysmal 1,207th in the world to around 125th. He also punches his ticket to the Players' Championship. Ernst also becomes the third rookie to step into the winner's circle this season. Now off the course, there was a lot going on in Charlotte. Two-time heart transplant recipient Eric Compton threw out the first pitch at a Charlotte Knights game where fellow heart transplant recipient and former Yankees catcher Bobby Height was on the receiving end. Both were there to spread the word about organ donation during the life share of the Carolinas event. Now for more on a few more memorable moments from the week, let's start out to Tom Wormy of SiriusXM PGA Tour Radio. When I look back at the 2013 Wells Fargo Championship here at Quail Hollow Club in Charlotte, North Carolina, I'll think of the words of Phil Mickelson, who said this course is on his short list as far as the best he has ever played, tee to green. He said this tournament, the Wells Fargo Championship, has the feel of a major tournament. And why shouldn't it? In just a few years, it will host the PGA Championship. You know, I'll also think of Ricky Fowler, because on Saturday he shot 77. Certainly not his best day on the course. But he did not disappoint the young fans of Charlotte, North Carolina. A marshal came out to the autograph area and said, you know, guys, Ricky didn't play all that well today. He might not come over and sign your autographs. Well, Ricky came over and signed every last one, every flag, every hat, every program, everything those young fans had for him to sign. And he made a lot of new fans again on a Saturday here in Charlotte. The last thing I'll think of is the 17th hole, that distinctive par three here at Quail Hollow Club and the great fans that line the hillside and sit in their rocking chairs and enjoy the golf and salute the players who come through and play that signature par three. Nope, we didn't see a whole lot of sunshine this week in Charlotte, North Carolina, but we did have a great time in the Queen City. Thanks, Tom. Next up, it's a home game for the PGA Tour as we kick off the 40th Players' Championship. PGATour.com will have over 70 hours of live coverage, including two streams, follow a group, and feature in holes. There will also be a pregame show on Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, so really, there's no excuse not to have your app open all week long to PGATour.com for all the action.